before I jump in giving you my personal opinions on the best laptops for data analysts and programmers, I want you to just take a step back and think about the following things. First of all, I want you to briefly forget about specifications. And yes, I know they're very important, but we'll get back to those later on. Trust me. Put a feature that is important to you, i.e. battery life, display, etc. And you can be really specific with this. I know I'm being quite vague. I want you to put each point in a column. And it can be as many columns as you want. It doesn't matter. It's your perfect laptop that you're searching for. I'm going to do three main tiers, low budget, medium budget, and high budget. So let's get started. So jumping into the low budget section, we have the Asus VivoBook 16. Hopefully I said that correct. And basically what I've gathered here, the pros of this laptop is it has a great selection of ports, huge 16 inch display, 16 gigabytes of RAM, although all of the laptops on this list has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM since I believe that it's very important in 2023. Don't get anything less than 16 gigs of RAM, especially on laptops that have memories soldered to the laptop. It just doesn't really make sense in my personal opinion. A Ryzen 5 6600H and a built-in fingerprint scanner, which I thought was quite neat at this price point. Oh, I forgot to mention actually, you can get this laptop in a higher spec. So if you wanted the Ryzen 7 5800, H, uh, although it does make it a bit more expensive, but again, if your workload demands on higher processing power, then I would personally lean more towards this. But from a budget standpoint, the 5600H still makes sense. And especially the 16 gigabyte of RAM is still quite great for a laptop at this caliber and price point. Now I've gathered the con to this laptop is there's no Thunderbolt 4, so it's only USB-C 3.2 Gen 1, which is still quite good, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have the Thunderbolt 4 functionality. And it doesn't have a touch screen, which very few people will probably be bothered by. But for me personally, if I'm looking for a Windows laptop, I like a touch screen. Okay, moving on to the next laptop, we have the 2023 Lenovo laptop. I don't even know the model number. I mean, it does say the model number here, but when I search it on Google, there's nothing really comes up. It's only on Amazon. Um, but this is still for a little bit more. This is a even better laptop. And look, it comes with 32 gigabyte of RAM, 599. Obviously I'll put the dollar equivalent as well since I believe that's the world reserved currency. But for the price, a laptop with 32 gigabytes of RAM, you cannot go wrong personally. So the advantage of this laptop, again, is this 32 gigabytes of RAM I just em emphasized before. And as you can see, it still has a great selection of ports. And it also has AMD Vega graphics, which is quite nice. Now, of course, you're probably not going to be doing some high-end gaming on this. It's, it's not really a gaming laptop, but it can be beneficial. Now the con to this, it is a little bit let down by the 4 core 8 thread CPU and it doesn't have a backlit keyboard like the other one. Okay, moving on to the more medium tier and you probably saw this coming, but yes, of course, I'm going to recommend the Dell XPS 13 laptop. As you can probably tell, the pros are it had a premium design as well as very thin and light. It also has an excellent display with an option for touchscreen for a little bit extra, well, I'd say a little bit, <laughs> probably around 200 pounds or dollars more, potentially. And and it has the option for a 10 core Intel Core i7. And of course, it had a backlit keyboard. Now getting to the cons of this laptop, as you can see, the ports, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's only two of them. However, the good news is, it is Thunderbolt 4, which means that you can which means that you will be getting these insanely fast speeds, but you may need to use a hub or a dock or adapters or anything along those lines. And to be honest, that's the only cons I can think of with this laptop. Again, I haven't had personal experience with it. Judging on the research I've done and the reviews, it seemed like it's a very great laptop. Okay, the next recommendation would be the HP Envy 360 or 360. Again, this laptop, 
had a very solid construction. It's a two in one, which is great. And it has the option for a 10 core CPU, depending on the model. Now the cons are, from what I can see, there was no HDMI port, but you still seem to have a decent selection of ports. And I couldn't really think of anything else apart from poor upgradability, but I'm sure that probably applies for most, if not all of the laptops on this list. Now, of course, you saw this coming. Of course, I'm gonna recommend the MacBook Air. Now, I would recommend any MacBook Air, but personally, I would spend a little bit extra and get the newer models, given that you'll be getting the better display. And of course, the new 15 inch one just came out not long ago. So why not take a look at this one? Of course, the, the screen size varies on your preference, but the pros would be, of course, it has amazing build quality. It has amazing display and speakers. It has great battery life. It has great software support. We'll get back to that in a second and it has great performance. Now, I will say I'm a little bit biased when it comes to these. I'll try not to be, but as you may have picked up, I might be a little bit biased. However, there are some cons. And the reason why I'm a little bit biased is I personally own the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which I found it to be a great laptop. So yes, moving on to the cons, of course, are drawbacks on everything. As you can tell, it can be pretty expensive on the model that you choose. And personally, if I'm gonna spend over two grand on a MacBook Air, I may as well just get a MacBook Pro. <laughs> it doesn't run Windows natively, if that bothered you. The CPU is not an x86 architecture, so you may run into a little bit of software incompatibility. Although, Apple has created a great translation layer called Rosetta 2, which seemed to do a great job of translating x86 instruction to ARM based for their Apple Silicon. And of course, on the MacBook Air models, the display is only 60 Hertz, although it, it shouldn't really matter given, you know, you won't need a 120 Hertz display for programming or data analysis. Although it would be great to program at 120 Hertz. And the last laptop in the medium budget category is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro. It has an AMD Ryzen 7 6800S Creator Edition CPU, which is 8 cores, 16 threads, a great display, and around 12 hours of battery life, I believe, although don't quote me on that. And I've been looking around for ages on the internet and I could not find any cons with this laptop, apart from it has poor upgradability, which again applies for pretty much all of the laptops on this list. So yeah, this could potentially be a great option as well. And the final category is the high-end laptops. Again, you probably saw this coming. And yes, I know there are plenty of high-end Windows laptops as well. Again, my personal opinion, I think the MacBook Pro is definitely up there. It pretty much had the same pros and cons as I mentioned for the MacBook Air. However, you do get a 120Hz display, which is great. And I generally can't find any cons about this, apart from the price point. Yes, it's very expensive. Again, the cons would be it's very expensive, as you can see, looking at the iWater in price at the bottom of the screen. And I'm not even gonna mention the upgradability aspect. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next one, which is gonna be one of my favorite designed Windows laptops. Like, it's just something about the dual screen experience that does it for me. Even though I've never used this laptop, I just really want one. Of course, the pros obviously is a dual display I've just mentioned before. It seemed to have a decent battery life, although that can also potentially be a con as well. When I say decent, apparently it's a decent battery life considering it's powering two displays, although one of them is supposedly 120 hertz. And I suppose when it comes to the cons, as mentioned before, the battery life, it's probably not the best in terms of battery life. And you may have noticed, it's not the best experience for a left-handed user. Although, if you use an external mouse, you might not be bothered about that. Of course, I forgot to mention, there's a 14 core CPU in this, and you are getting 16 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM. So, I do think this is definitely a great laptop to consider. I hope that helped. I know it's not the most in detail video there is when it comes to specifications, pros and cons and all of that, but it should give you a general baseline of 
what my personal opinions are and what to look for when choosing your perfect laptop for programming or data analysis. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and comment down below what was your favorite laptop from the list or if there's a laptop that you can think of that I haven't included, put those recommendations down there as well. Now if you or you know someone else who's looking for a gaming laptop, then why not check out my previous video where I showed you how to find the perfect gaming laptop. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and content, then please hit the subscribe button. If I don't see you in the next video, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.